Hello, and welcome to a podcast from the St. Raymond Nonatus Foundation for Freedom, Family, and Faith. My name is Ann DeSantis. This is our 10 Virtues podcast series for those who are affected by divorce and separation. I have with me our board president, Mickey Kelly. Mickey, great to have you back on the podcast again. And thank you for having me. Now, this is actually our last podcast in the series. Um, this is episode 10. Um, now, for those of you who watch our podcasts all the time, you know that we do a lot of podcasts and we've done a lot already for divorce and separation. So don't worry, even though this series is going to be over, there's still more to come. And all you need to do is keep an eye on that Philly Nonatus YouTube channel and subscribe to it so that you can see and hear all of our great podcasts. Now, for today's topic, we're going to talk about the virtue of honesty. And of course, you are our audience, those who have been either divorced, separated, or an old. And if if you have been an old or have been, you know, dealt with divorce in your life, you know that honesty is a very important virtue, not only to be honest with God, but with those around you. So Mickey, let's just start with your take on this wonderful virtue of honesty and where it fits in to the lives of those who are affected by divorce and separation. Tell us your take on it. Well, I think too, um, and as I think about this, um, think about honesty, well, we all hear the terms like honesty is the best policy. And um, as a matter of fact, uh, Thomas Jefferson once said that honesty is in the first book of wisdom. Whereas, too, it's also found in Proverbs. And I think one uh, verse that kind of really stands out to me from the fourth chapter of Proverbs, it reads, Keep your heart with all vigilance, for from it flows the springs of life. Put away from you crooked speech and put devious talk far from you. Let your eyes look directly forward and your gaze be straight before you. Take heed to the path of your feet, then all your ways will be sure. Do not swerve to the left or to the right. Turn your foot away from evil. I think maybe what this quote is really telling us is that it's basically, it's another way of saying truth, basically. And I think that's been a, it's been a problem a lot because there's gossip and what have you. And I feel like too, like in our culture, when I think of honesty, I feel like it's, it's under constant attack. And, you know, there are times like you do want to tell the deep, you want to spill the beans, but then there are times like you don't have to tell everything. I had to learn about this myself like time, like time and time again with, you know, my, in my romantic relationship and also like with my professional life, you know, I have to to some degree exercise a a degree of honesty, you know, I can't falsely accuse someone. Um, I can't, you know, hide my feelings, you know, or I can't say everything, you know, sort of speak, but I just want to be like, Oh, you know, I'm just doing this and you know, this, that, and everything. Whereas, you know, in, you know, today's society, you know, people like easily to give in the gossip or start gossip or just not be very truthful. And, I feel like that's something that, you know, we need to reclaim, you know, especially for families in Christ, because how often do, how often are, are, are spouses, you know, honest with each other? And I think that's something like we're going to unpack, you know, in the next few minutes, which like, you know, we could agree on that one. And, you know, from a married perspective, and I'm sure there are times like you and Ange, you know, have to be honest with each other on certain things, you know, like this or that, like, you know, looking at potential career change, what's on your mind, you know, things like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Honesty is, as you said at the beginning, it is the best policy, especially in marriage and relationships. And we could probably do a whole other podcast about marriage and the, and the, and the honesty in marriage. But since our audience for this podcast are those affected by divorce, right, and those who are separated or annulled, um, it's a different level of honesty, right? Because maybe you're not in a relationship with a former spouse anymore. 
And maybe there's a certain level of honesty, even with your kids, right? Um, sometimes kids want to know what happened between mom and dad, whether they be young kids or adult children, they want to know why did mom and dad get divorced? Now, as we know, with like with anything else, there are things that are proper to be honest about with your children. And then there are things that maybe are best to keep to yourself. So I think for those matters that you're not sure, what do the kids need to know about what happened between us? Um, that would be something to pray about. Maybe something to speak to a priest about. Maybe some what, something to speak to a therapist about. Who knows? But it's something for you to ponder and say to yourself, what are those matters? What are those matters that are really private? And what are things that we need to discuss, right? Because unfortunately, and I've learned this as executive director for this nonprofit, is that not all divorces and separations go smoothly. Some of them can be pretty nasty, unfortunately. Um, and sometimes people find peace long, many, many years after the fact. Maybe it's when they finally do get an annulment and they feel like that things are finally over. Um, I can't speak for everybody. I'm just speaking for the matters that I've heard about from being this executive director and talking to so many people. Although I'm not the primary one who does, does our pastoral consultations. We have priests that do that. And some of you who are watching, you already know that we have priests. So if you're watching this episode and you're thinking, I want to talk to a priest about my issues, please do reach out to us on our website at onatus.org and make a free appointment because that's something that we do all the time. We speak to people, we help people decide what are those matters that need to be discussed and prayed about. And I just want to make that invitation to all of you. Now, before we move on and I give Mickey a chance to comment on anything, um, I did find an article which is from a website called the Holy Cross College. And it says that being honest is not always easy. As Christians, we know how easy it is to fall into sin. Sometimes we may ask, what's wrong with a little white lie? Anyway, everybody's doing it. Or we may, we may succumb to some situations which unmindfully we take for granted because of their familiarity, familiarity, yet eventually dismantling our integrity as honest people. Instances like stealing someone's pencil in school, not telling our parents the truth, not giving back something that a person has lost, engaging in gossip, like Mickey said, creating fake news in social media, or even cheating on tests are but some obvious manifestations of our need to grow in the virtue of honesty. I'll just read a little bit more. Now, like I said, um, I'm reading this just so we can open up a conversation a little bit. It says that honesty is a direct reflection of our inner character. Since God is true, the members of the people, as members of his people, we're called to live in this truth. Honest people love the truth and can practice the truth. Thus, the Holy Spirit works on them. Even little white lies to protect someone, someone's feelings uh, uh, can compromise our faith. Remember that those speaking and living the truth help those around us come to the truth. Honest people are trustworthy and reliable. Our actions are a reflection of our faith and reflecting the truth in our actions is a part of being a good witness, like a way of keeping ourselves in clear conscience. Now, sorry, I read so much there, but I just wanted to read that because honesty, again, is the best policy with God, right? And I also want to talk about confession because that's a way that if you have lied to God, to others, or even to yourself, it's a way to come clean. So Mickey, let's talk about confession if we could, and how this is a way to clean our conscience. I'm going to bring it back to you and we can talk about confession. Yes, and I feel like confession is one of the most um, underachieved sacraments in the church. You know, it's easy for everyone to get in line for a communion every given Sunday. But I feel like there are people that are realized they are doing a lot of damage to their soul, especially if they are in the state of moral sin. Now, in order to, for those who need a refresher on mortal sin, there has to be a grave offense, okay? And you intentionally want to do this. So say you want to go and shoot three random people. I'm not, I'm not encouraging you to do so, by the way. I'm just saying. Like, if you decide, you know, I'm just going to kill random people 
that's a mortal sin. Now, if you, if you, you know, inflicted harm on someone, you're like, oh no, what the hell did I just do? Like, you know, it, and let's face it, it does happen. You know, and you felt remorse about it, you know, that's not, that's not problematical at all, you know. But if you intentionally hurt someone, you know, that, that's, or intentionally did something against the church, you know, abortion, um, be in a same, same sex union, um, rob people intentionally without paying them back or whatever. That's a mortal sin. Um, intentionally have sex outside of marriage, intentionally had an affair with someone while you're married or whatever, or cheat on some, whatever. You know, you commit something against purity, you commit something against this and that. If they were intentional and you did it, that is a moral sin and has to be confessed. Okay. Now, for confession, you have to go. It's required minimum to go once a year. But for me, I like to go twice a month. So I usually go around the first Saturday devotion. And I will go again, maybe like halfway through the month or a little over midpoint. If I'm ambitious, like given like, like during like Lent, I actually would try to go maybe in like another week before Easter, if that makes sense. But my encouragement, just go to confession. God's mercy is not going to come to you. You have to go to him. It's like Moses. The Ten Commandments didn't come to him. He went on top of Mount Sinai and received a tablet and proclaimed God's law before everyone. Seek his mercy. Seek him. He awaits you. And the only person that is keeping you from seeking God's mercy is yourself. So never hold yourself back. Push, break through the, your own wall to go to, God, to 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 seek God's mercy. He awaits you. That's right. He does await you. Thank you for your reflections on confession, because it is a way that if you feel that you have sinned against God and in, in the virtue of honesty. Now I'm reading from that same article and I just want to read a little bit more because I do think there's something to unpack here. It says that honesty means to give your heart to God, never to play him false in anything. To be honest is when you speak the truth and act truthfully. It is to refrain from impurity in your actions and words and to deceive neither God nor man. It is a virtue that builds character, instills honor, and fosters a deep sense of self-worth. If we were to live in communion with God, who is truth, we must consent to live in the truth. It is this virtue that is almost integral of temperance by which a person loves all that is worthy of honor. It is a positive social character trait where you tell the truth and you show integrity. By teaching children, now talking about children and young people, that honesty is not only practical, but also virtuous, we bear authentic witness to our faith and reveal to them the truth of Jesus' life and teaching. I just want to read that because you know, when we're honest and we live an honest life, our children see that and they they aspire to that, right? So just keep in mind too, you're, maybe you're a single parent who's watching this video and you're dealing with honesty issues, not only with your kids, but that maybe the honesty issues that ha they have with you, right? Kids can lie to their parents too. And especially sometimes when kids come from a home that has been divorced or separated, that can happen. I didn't know, Mickey, if you wanted to talk about that too, because uh, as people who are affected by divorce, maybe they have kids and maybe honesty is an issue with their kids too. What do you think? And I do agree with you on that one because, you know, especially if you have younger kids, I mean, they don't seem to wrap their heads around on what is happening. You know, and I feel like the parents owe it to them to let them know, like, hey, um, your parents and I are just having some problems and 
what have you. And, you know, you have, you have to be upfront about it because it's going to create confusion. And I think, like, you owe it to your kids to tell them, like, hey, there's some problems. You know, and, but I think one of the important things you should end when you say your, your mother or your father and I um, are having problems, you just need to pray for us. I think that's a very important thing to tell them. And I still remember when I was 10 years old, when, when, my, when my mom broke the news about my dad uh, leaving the home. And, you know, I just still remember seeing tears in his eyes. And it hurt me. It really did. And, you know, even though you, you do seek the healing, that, that, that scar is going to be there for the rest of your life. And you just hope that that scar doesn't get op- doesn't open again when you experience divorce firsthand as well as a spouse. You know, it's one thing you experience as a kid, but as a spouse, there's a problem. And I just hope that children don't have to go through it at all. Because they're going to be confused and, you know, everything like that. But I think what's very important for children is to pray for their parents. Likewise, parents should pray for their children. I love the fact that you brought up prayer because it's so important. You know, we can't really do anything without prayer. It's our lifeblood. It's the way that we communicate with God. It's the way that he communicates with us. And of course, we know, Mickey, there's all kinds of ways that you can pray. You know, you can pray a rosary. You can go to mass and pray at mass. You can pray the chaplet of divine mercy. You can pray aspirations. You can pray simple prayers. You can pray in a contemplative way or meditative way. So, I mean, there's no end to really the ways that you can pray. But I think the most important thing is that you do pray. Um, Now, I want to go back and just reiterate um, or go to this article again just a little bit more. It says that courage is the ability to do what is right and good, even when the act is dangerous. Now, this is on honesty. Truth, uh, excuse me, uh, truthfulness is the simple act of saying the truth at all times. Loyalty is the act of being loyal, the ability to show firm and constant support to a person or organization. And reliability is the act of showing that people can always rely and depend on you. So these are important facets of honesty, the virtue of honesty. And I know that Mickey was talking a little bit about aspects of honesty that are outside of like this realm of divorce or separation. And we can do that. We can talk about other aspects just to bring those up. But when it comes to you, our audience, the people that we're speaking to, we want to make sure that you um, are understanding that this virtue of honesty is very important for you who are somehow wounded by separation or divorce. And I always say, we want to remember, remind you that our services are always there for you. Prayer, priestly consultation, podcasts and videos, programs and events, retreats, different other things that we offer. So always make sure to check out that website, connect with us, because we really want to help you to live these virtues. Now, this has been a whole 10-part series. This is actually our very last podcast together, Mickey and I, for this series. But I want to invite you to go back and watch all of those other ones that we did in the series and connect on our Philly Nonatis YouTube channel and and follow it. Now, we're coming close to the end of the podcast, and I want to thank Mickey because Mickey's taking a little bit of a break with us on doing these series, and I'm going to be starting a brand new series uh, for adult children of divorce where I'm going to be talking about ways to overcome and to heal after a divorce, after being the adult child of divorce. So if you want to watch that series, just be sure to keep an eye on that Philly Nonatis YouTube channel. Mickey, we're getting toward the end. I didn't know if you wanted to say any final words to our audience as we're ending this series, and you're going to be taking a little bit of a break with us on our podcast. And I have to be honest, I am in a loss of words, especially now that that my time is drawn to a close. Um, helping you out. And for the last three years, it has been 
a ride. You know, we were coming together realizing that we need to evangelize the people where they are, especially those that were kind of trapped in a bubble for like two years from 2020 to 2022 with COVID. And then I realized, you know, we have to keep this going, you know, but I feel like too, the problem with so much of me with like the internet these days is there's so much things that just want to kill, you know, people's joy. It wants to kill their spirit, but we provided the antidotes that help us overcome those problems. And I am humbled. I am proud that I was a part of this endeavor. And I just want to close with two things. First of all, and I want to thank you for having me on board, you know, being your, uh, your wingman, so to speak, with this, uh, this podcast endeavor. You know, I, I have to be honest. I always thought I'd be on a podcast and that actually became a reality, you know, especially with the foundation. Now, I still will be involved with the foundation, but I feel like um, I'm in a transition phase. And I do would like to encourage everyone that's listening to pray for me because I feel like the best, as Frank Sinatra would say, the best is yet to come for me. Um, keep the prayers coming. That's one. Two, I am not done. I feel like, you know, I feel like that that line from the Godfather, if you think you're finished, you're going to be sucked back in one way or another. And I don't think God is done with me yet. I don't think he'll be done with me until I take my dying breath when I'm either 80 or God willing, I'd live to be 100. And maybe you'd see my great, great, Great grandkids, but that's what we're thinking right there, you know. Um, but I think if there's one thing that I would like to offer to people is two things: one, share our content with others, even if it's oldie, it's still a goodie. Share it. Two, be present. To the people that mean the most to you. And that, and that includes your, your parents. Your family. Be present. I remember a talk by Luke from Live, like, um, Live Vertical. And he was very stern about the use. How consumed we are with this. We need to put those down. We need to be around the flesh and blood that we created. Our children. And they would create their grand like your grandkids, and so on and so forth. Because these things here, they're temporary. But what's eternal is family and friends and the people that mean the most to us. The people that we love is what counts the most. So I can guarantee you, they are going to create a lot of crisis. And, we, and the best solution is Something that St. Teresa of Calcutta would say, love your children, love your family. She would agree with me. She was alive today, along with many other people. They never knew that we were going to have a lot of problems with the gadgets. And it's become an addiction. I had a chat with a colleague today. Uh, or I'm not sure when we're going to be seeing this, but she shared how the problem with a lot of children coming up today is that and so, something St. Teresa would say is a lack of love. So we do need to be charitable to others. And if, especially around small kids, you know, there are three things that are going to happen when they're crying, when they're maybe they're scared, or if they have like that whole fear thing that's like in their brain. There are three things that we can respond. We respond with love. You know, we comfort them, give them a hug. We kind of like calm them down. Two, we give them. You know, we get in the iPad, we get in the phone, they play the games or something. Or we tell them to shut up or something around those lines. Truthfully, I prefer option A because everyone is created by God to be loved and to love others in return. And I think that's the problem with a lot of divorces today. And we here at the foundation, 
We are not done. We will make sure every person's loved, whether they're, they're children divorced parents or divorced spouse. You are still loved by God and nothing, nothing will stand in your way. And we made a point about going to confession. God's mercy is waiting for you. You must seek that. And, and I do want to close with this one final thought towards you. These last three years have been a ride. And I don't think we're going to be done yet at all. Just like the fact God is not done with us. So the best is yet to come. More to come for the both of us. Don't worry. As Arnold Schwarzenegger would say, I'll be back. <laughs> oh, so true. Mickey, it has been such an honor to do so many of these series. I mean, I think we did like four, at least four series. So please do go to the Philly Nonatis playlist on YouTube and you'll be able to see all the other series that Mickey and I did. We did one on the Beatitudes. We did one on the Ten Commandments. We did the ones on the saints. So you can watch a lot of other podcasts. Like he said, share that content. I would like to ask all of you to pray for Mickey moving forward. As he said, um, you know, we all always have some great things happening in our lives, but I know in particular that there's some wonderful things happening in Mickey's life. So um, please do keep him in prayer and we will see all of you next time. Mickey, thank you so much again. And thank you so much. And for everyone who's listening, Again, share. Um, and if I would like to make one more plug, if you have been inspired by some of the wisdom, I the wisdom bonds I've been dropping live and everything, um, I do have a YouTube channel called The Catholic Philadelphia, and you are most welcome to follow me, subscribe, share my videos. I do have uh, weekly videos that come out usually every Sunday. Uh, so feel free to share it on Facebook. Um, I'm sure there's a way you could, there's a will and a way you can share on Twitter and Instagram and what have you. So please share. I mean, I know, Anne, you're a big fan. Your daughters are a big fan of mine. Your husband's a big fan of mine. Some of your family members are a big fan of mine. And even people in our inner circles are big fans. So let's keep it growing. That's it grow. right. Like now I want to repeat team. that again. It's the Catholic Philadelphian. So look that up on, on YouTube. And that's his name for writing too. He's a writer with Catholic 365. So check it out, the Catholic Philadelphian. And also just that reminder, make sure to make your free pastoral consultation at nonatis.org or send us a confidential prayer request. We're here for you. God bless you all. And we will see you next time. God bless everyone. And thank you.